And there's one scholar who is who lives in Riyadh at the moment, Sheikh Saleh Al Usaimi. Sheikh Saleh Al Usaimi. May Allah preserve him. He's from the major scholars of this time. And every year in in Medina, in the winter holidays, he has a eight day course, Adora, where he teaches fifteen books. It starts from Fajr till about ten AM. And then you have a break till about Asr, which is about 3 p.m. And then from Asr all the way until 10 p.m. again at night. And something you'll find with him a lot is that he always focuses on this aspect a lot. Of etiquette of a student of knowledge. He sees a student get up and leave the class without asking permission of the teacher, he'll pull you up on it. He sees you, even if the class is finished, you leave before the teacher leaves, he'll pull you up on it. And there are two incidents uh, of his which I wanted to mention. And this, I just wanted to show you and establish the point of the way of how to speak to a teacher. The first was, and what I'll do, I'll write a little message for you, inshallah, and I'll put the links in there and I'll send it after the class so that you can listen to it and uh, uh, listen directly from the sheikh. But just to summarize, one person wrote a question to the sheikh and he said, Sheikh, you said, and in, in Arabic, they differentiate between singular and plural. If it's a singular person, they will say qulta, and if it's plural, they will say qultum, if you speak to more than one person. So this person used a singular, you said, this, this, A, B, and C. But there is a hadith that says this, this, and that. That was his question. And then the sheikh, he pulled the student off on this. Now, as many of us might think, there's nothing wrong, you said this, and the hadith says this. But the sheikh pulled him off. He said, if you want to... If you want an answer and form of guidance from me, then you don't ask like this. And he said, the way you ask, firstly, don't say you said, say you mentioned. There's a difference between you said, it's a bit more direct, and you mentioned, there's a slight difference. And then don't use a singular form. We don't have an English, but in Arabic he said, he said, ذَكَرْتُمْ Meaning don't say you, use the plural, because when you use the plural, it's a form of respect. We don't, again, we don't, have really that, we don't really have that in English, but in Urdu we, we, we do. And then he said, say... You mentioned, you mentioned this, however there's another hadith which seems to be problematic for me, can you please explain uh, how to reconcile between the two? And he said, this is how you ask. So these are very small points, but the sheikh, he pulled up students on this. And he said, when you ask the first way, it's as though you're, you want to debate with the teacher, that you said this, but, it, but there's another hadith that says this. So that was the first incident which I want to mention. The other incident was no, what normally happens when you study books of hadith, let's say you study Bukhari, Muslim, whatever it may be, there's normally a student on the side of the sheikh who's reading the hadith, and then there's a teacher who is explaining the hadith. So sometimes what happens is that the, the, the student that's reciting, he doesn't recite in a normal uh, tone, sometimes he can make it a little melodious to make it sound nice. So for example, he wouldn't say, عَنَ أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَبِي حَفْسِ عُمَرَ بْنِ خَطَّابِ رضي الله عنه أنه قال He might just recite it as عَنْ عُمَرَ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رضي الله عنه أنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول And then he mentioned the hadith So the student wrote to the sheikh He said, sheikh, can you please uh, tell the, or can you please tell the reciter or the reader of the hadith to recite in a normal manner and not a melodious manner because that is uh, likening uh, the hadith to the Quran. And then the Shaykh, you could tell he was angry. He said, whenever you write a question to your teacher, don't write it as you are giving a ruling. Who said it's not permissible for him? Who said it isn't? Where have you got this ruling from? And then he actually affirmed the opposite. He said, in fact, this is, something from, this is permissible. In fact, it is something recommended. And he mentioned Imam Malik and Ibn Hajar and many of the ulama regarding that issue. And then he said, when you ask a question, ask in a form of uh, that you are, um, you want a problem being solved. And not, can you tell this because he's doing it wrong. So subhanAllah, these are just two incidents uh, which I wanted to mention. Inshallah, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Just showing some of the etiquettes. And these, I know this is not something which is going to come over a night. But these are some things which I really want students to pick up on and apply and beautify themselves with. And we mentioned some of the etiquettes or some of the sayings of the ulama in the previous lesson. How, for example, Imam Ahmed, 5,000 people will attend his lesson. Only 500 will be writing. The other 4,500 will be benefiting from his mannerisms and so on.